what's up guys? Alex at Sipno Tech. Welcome to the first, first, first ever edition of the Sipno Tech talk show, which we're trying to make a weekly or bi-weekly talk show where we talk about everything technology for about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, it's going to be kind of like a podcast style, but you guys will love it. Uh, I'm going to be your co-host, Alex, and of course, I have Lita. Hi, uh, this is Lita, and uh, we're really excited today. Um, we've got some good news for you, and uh, let's get started. The inaugural episode. You know, we're going to actually do a lot of fun stuff uh, on this show, uh, Sipno Tech Talk Show. We're going to try to make it into something really unique where we're going to bring in other people who aren't tech experts or, um, you know, writers or anything. They literally are consumers like us who absolutely love technology and want to talk about technology. Absolutely. You know, that's basically what we are. We're, we don't claim to be tech experts or anything, but we love technology. We read about technology every single day. We talk about it every day. We love buying it. And we, <laughs> and we love buying things, so we might as well talk about it with you guys hopefully you guys can comment we can all interact together and uh yeah that's that's the plan that's the plan for this show the sipno tech talk show or stts and uh we're gonna bring in guests in the future episodes and we're all just gonna chat and uh talk about the news so without further ado let's jump into the news for the week of uh may what what Today's episode is recorded on May 14th, Saturday, May 14th. We're going to talk about the news for this previous week that just happened. Uh, and so, first topic. The first topic of the week is a big, big news. It, were, uh, it comes out from the Apple world. Okay. Want to jump onto the first one? Yeah, absolutely. So, we find out that Apple invests $1 billion in Chinese Uber, and I'm going to possibly butcher this, but it's a company called Didi Chusing, I think. Didi Chusing. I, I think that's... <laughs> I don't know how you say it. I'm Chinese, but I still don't... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you say it. I, I, I guess we should say Didi Chusing. Yeah, right? let's just go with that. Um, so a quick note is that just to explain how large it is, um, the firm says that it actually provides more than 11 million rides a day, and it claims to have 87% of the Chinese market share. That's pretty big. I, I actually think this is a really interesting move. With all the rumors going on the past few years about and, um, not Android, Apple potentially making a smart car, and of course, in the U.S. market now, we have the Apple Smart Connect where uh, you can actually have a connected Apple device onto a dashboard, mm -hmm. you know, that interface. Yeah. This is actually ingenious because people love using Uber, right? It's so true. imagine a, uh, a driver um, who is an Uber driver or, or some sort of paid driver, and he wants business. Instead of checking his phone and having to navigate with uh, typing in manual coordinates right. uh, for navigation to right. a potential customer, uh, they have a unified app that Apple can develop or something like that since they purchased this company. And so when you want to call a car, you literally pull out your phone and you pull up the app and you say, I want a car. Those coordinates go up to a nearby driver if he wants to accept the fee mm -hmm. on his connected car in the device, in the Apple car or Apple drive or whatever they call it. He can say accept and literally... This is a full service with the navigation fully integrated into a car or the tablet or whatever the Apple phone is. Mm -hmm. And it's perfect because it's all in one. So it, it makes a lot of sense to me. So when I first read this, I thought, hey, this this makes – it's been a long time coming. I wonder why Uber didn't work with Google or someone to do this earlier. Right? It is. It's super ingenious too. I mean I was just in Vegas last week and we took a ton of Ubers around the city. And even then, you know, I felt like the driver was kind of – clinging onto his phone in a way in multiple in multiple rides um, because I guess the Uber app itself just kind of, it's not really a navigation system. It just gives you an address of where the Uber, the person ordering the Uber wanted to go. So this is actually pretty, pretty big. Right, especially if you live in the city or actually I would be really excited for this news if I was a actual paid driver, whether you're a taxi driver or something else or like an Uber driver or, or Lyft uh, because... If if they integrate this somehow into the Apple CarPlay or a future Apple Car, this changes things. This is the new uh, paying 
technology is. for for driving yeah for transportation exactly yeah and uh, I could see something like this being really beneficial for uh, uh, paid drivers. Uh, interesting note as well. Uh, Tim Qu- uh, Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, had this to say uh, that, and I'm quoting. That is what we do today in the car business, so we will have to see what the future holds uh, in terms of rumors about the Apple car, which a lot of people have been talking about it for years and a lot of little hints here in their last couple of months about it. So uh, that's an interesting first story. Uh, That was the big news out of the tech world, anytime Apple or Google purchases somebody, especially for a billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, that's a big topic to talk about. And every anything Apple does, obviously, is... It's all over the news. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a few years ago when they actually purchased... Um, uh, what was that company that makes the Touch ID for them? They exclusively purchased them. And uh, it changed the technology landscape because they owned the best and basically the only viable fingerprint scanning company uh, biometric reading device company in the market. Now and it's so, huge. Yeah, and so they set this trend for fingerprints. I actually have the uh, iPhone SE, which has a first-generation fingerprint scanner. So when this fingerprint scanner came out on the iPhone 5S, uh, after Apple purchased that company, it literally set all the other tech companies on fire. They had to step back and wait a few years until they could find a viable competitor or build their own yeah. in order to compete with that. So, you know, Apple usually in the past have made savvy purchases. And so uh, only time will tell, but I, I, I guess we can look at this and think maybe they have a vision for something, right? It's true. I also want to add in really fast, too, that uh, Uber did admit earlier this year that they were losing more than $1 billion, uh, a year in China spending huge amounts of money, um, discounted rides and everything. So I think Apple sees this as a, as a pretty smart move in, in this time. So, All right, and moving along from Apple to the other big juggernaut in the tech industry, we are going to talk a little bit about Google and Google I.O. So Google I.O. Is, uh, there is Google's developer conference, and that's an annual thing, and it's coming up next week. Uh, It's really exciting for us tech fans, even though it isn't a software show. It's not. I I mean, it is a software show, even though it's not a hardware show like CES, where they show off new tech. It's still very exciting. Yeah, Google I/O has somewhat become like a cult event for us fans, uh, where we're anticipating new devices uh, unfairly. Because it is a developer conference for app makers to learn about what Google's image of I mean uh, of Chrome OS and Android is for the coming year. So uh, even though it's not a hardware show, we come to expect hardware. And um, coming out this week, on I think earlier this week on the thirteenth, there was a leak online. Um, I'm reading this off Android Authority. Uh, it was a Android VR, a standalone Android VR device was leaked online, and there was an image of it. Uh, it's very interesting because Google, when they first came up with the cardboard, <laughs> they just popped it out of nowhere yeah. on Google I.O. and yeah. gave one to everybody, yeah. and everyone was like, wow, this is interesting. So uh, could this be the new cardboard? It could be and a little hint. It's just like, I, I don't know, is this like a Gear VR competitor, or it's just another toy? I, I think it's smart for Google to do this because when you really think about it, this whole virtual reality thing, it's still just getting started. Um, the two off the top of my head that I know that are pretty popular, the Oculus Rift, the, the I think HTC has one as well, the Vive. The Vive. Yeah. Um, and there's also you know the much less inexpensive options as well. So there's not really a middle ground here. So maybe this is something... Google can potentially hop into. Right, and it's interesting to note because this is actually a, well, it's rumored to be a standalone VR device. So you don't actually have to pop in your phone, uh, which is unique because the most popular one in the market right now, uh, I think most common one because Samsung's basically throwing out for free, is the Samsung Gear VR. So it's only 99 bucks. If you bought it during the promotion time, you got it for free with the S7. Uh, and that one, you actually do have to pop in your phone your Galaxy phone uh, in particular. So 
if Google really is making a standalone VR that doesn't require a phone or any thing to link it together, I, I would assume the price point will be pretty high, right? I would think so too. I and, would think so too. And uh, over the few years that Google Cardboard has been out, they have been developing some apps for it, right? And so if this is a complete different device, would those apps still work on it? I don't know. We'll have to find is out. It, is this a whole new platform? Do, do they still yeah. run the same a- APKs as Android does? Or, you know, I that's something interesting that uh, we'll be paying attention to. But there was a lot of people who were really interested in this because VR, while it hasn't taken the world by storm, there has been a lot of... Um, tech people who are interested, enthusiasts who are interested in. And we're actually going to review the um, Viewmaster, which we purchased uh, a a while ago, last year. But uh, I recently got a chance to play with it a little more recently because of the whole VR craze. And um, we'll take a look at that on the channel in the coming weeks. But VR is launching everywhere. So I I guess it makes sense for Google to try to make this, right? Absolutely. And it's going to be kind of neat to see it if it if it is a standalone device as well. Um, you know, when you put your phone in, it's it's kind of a hassle. Mm-hmm. You wonder what side do I put it in? What how do I push the buttons in there? And each phone is made differently too, so Right. Right, because if you remember on the Google cardboard, on the actual cardboard, there was a little uh knob on the side, a little magnet that you had to use to navigate the menu, right? So, uh I wonder how the standalone VR is going to be like. Are they going to give you a little controller like yeah. uh, the Vive, or you know, how how's yeah. it going to work? Uh, so that's definitely a story to stay tuned for uh, when Google I/O happens uh, this coming week. Uh, another thing from I/O that I am very excited for uh, because I am a huge Chromebook fan is the long-standing rumor that Chromebooks and Android, <laughs> Chrome OS and Android, will finally merge together. So there's been a lot of conflicting reports and a lot of rumors that Android apps over a, uh, I believe they said a thousand or a million, million. over a million apps from the Google Play Store will be coming to the Chromebooks. So it basically, in essence, replaces the Chrome OS, uh, the Chrome App Store, which uh, isn't that great. It's not. I don't even use it that much. Right. You, we, we don't really actually use the Chrome App Store. I don't think anybody really uses yeah. the Chrome App Store. But if the Play Store does make it, wow, wouldn't that be insane, right? It's going to be like an all-in-one system kind of thing. And uh, as a Chromebook, pretty big Chromebook fan, this is, this is, I think, what's really going to tie in the whole Android experience together, too. Right. And this story came about uh, in late April as uh, some users found a, a checkbox with enabled Android apps to run on your Chromebook thanks to the open source nature of Chrome OS. Uh, some Redditors and some other users found that out. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess Google has been slowly incorporating that into their Chromebooks uh, to set the basis of that actual release. Absolutely. So uh, if, if this is the actual case and they announce this in Google I.O. next week, oh wow, this is a game changer this because this is what everybody has been dreaming of. Uh one of the knocks in Chrome OS is that it's such a web-based system that when it's offline, you can't really do much. So to, if you can actually have a million Android apps on your device, this All is basically yeah. a beautiful big tablet with a keyboard yeah. and a touchpad and a, and a uh, trackpad. And so just imagine what it could do for games, too, with this. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome to play it on, a, on a, like, I don't know, Clash of Clans or... Battle Royale or Clash Royale on your uh, uh, Chromebook Pixel. Yeah. That would be one heck of an enjoyment to play. But uh, hopefully this is one of the true rumors because I am very invested in Chrome OS. I love Chrome OS. And uh, I definitely want to see this. I definitely want to see this. I think we all do. Yeah. Um, while we're on Google I.O., is there anything you want to talk about? Anything you're excited for or you're hoping that you show up? That will show up on, on Google I.O.? I honestly have to say I'm, I'm mostly hoping for what we just talked about with the Android and Chromebook stuff. I you, you, do you think uh, they're going to show off any uh, hardware, a new Nexus? I would love that. I'm a huge fan of my Nexus 6P, but I don't... 
probably going to wait until the September yeah, event to unveil it. I think they're going to wait on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the rumors for a while now have been that HTC is making two two Nexuses this year. So uh, uh, I guess we'll take a, I guess we'll see. Yeah. But these two rumors, the whole uh, Android VR and the Chrome OS with Android apps, have been circulating for a while now. So uh, more than likely, I do believe that these two will actually come to fruition so. uh, on Google I.O. So, moving on to the next story we have, uh, we are looking at the Samsung Charm. It's uh, their new wearable. It uh, basically is like a new fitness tracker, super minimal looking. Um, It just pings, lights up, but you don't actually get full notifications um, onto the device. So, it's kind of like a Fitbit competitor, I guess. Well, if it is a Fitbit competitor, it better be pretty efficient because Samsung does have multiple fitness trackers. Mm-hmm. The whole rumor, I mean, it's not even a rumor by now. They, people have seen the leaks, the um, Gear Fit 2, uh, which is a follow-up to the Gear Fit, which came out a few years ago now. Um, so if this is a Fitbit competitor, it better be cheaper than <laughs> The Fitbit that and the Gear Fit because this does not look as premium as the Gear Fit, right? But knowing Samsung, they'll probably price it higher. <laughs> I do get the impression that uh, this this little charm is more. It's targeted more towards the female demographic, at least from their marketing pictures. It looks right. like, um, and I I think they're pretty cute, but I don't. I don't know. There's still something strange about this the circle the circle part. It looks like a misfit. Like yes. The misfit has yeah. that on there, uh, and we are actually taking a look at some fitness trackers uh, in the near future. Uh, Lita has been testing out the Razer Naboo X. Mm-hmm. I've uh, had it for a couple days now, liking it so far. But we'll uh, we'll do a review for that later. Right. So I mean, this market is so saturated right now, and the Mi Band. There's a new Mi Band from Xiaomi coming out oh, yeah. soon too, and these are dirt cheap nowadays. So unless Samsung prices this in the very low tens range maybe like 30 40 dollars i don't know if this will be competitive and i really doubt they'll they'll do that too um but the charm is supposed to use led notifications it's supposed to alert you for any incoming calls incoming text messages um and any other push alerts um they advertise that it's straightforward color-coded notifications right. and so also display information re- about charging yeah they're not really relying on a nice saturated screen like the gear fit uh, also interesting to note, it comes with a 17 milliamp battery that Samsung claims will last for about 14 days on a single charge. That part's pretty pretty impressive. Um, also, you could change out the bands, uh, so it's a little dot that you can interchange between the bands. Uh, I guess these are Samsung only bands, unless third parties make these bands, but I don't really see a third party making something like this if the demand isn't that high. Possibly right? down the line if if it becomes really popular. But I don't I don't know. Do you think it's a smart move for Samsung to do this with, with the market right now? Well, that, that depends. If uh, Samsung is a big name brand and people will buy Samsung things, especially the, the mass general consumers who only know about Samsung and Apple. So when they see something like this, they might purchase this over something like the Gear Fit if it's priced correctly. Uh, the Gear Fit is attractive to fitness people because it does have a gorgeous LED display and, uh, I mean, AMOLED, Super AMOLED display, which curves around your wrist. And I have worn the Gear Fit, and I, I do like the original Gear Fit. Um, and this, I could I could see um, female uh, joggers or, or someone who actually kind of likes a little bit of fashion when they're yes. doing a sport. Like, yes. like Serena Williams. She wears the most outlandish fashion outfits true. to her matches. So <laughs> I, I, I can, yeah, I can imagine uh, someone who actually wants to do fashion and, and sports stuff at the same time and wants to look fashionable. I could kind of see that. It's... Interesting. I mean, I guess you can interchange the bands, too, and switch it up. But I just, I don't know. As a female, I just don't think it's that cute. And, of so. course, it comes in three colors, yeah. uh, typical 2016 colors, which is gold, black, and rose quartz. <laughs> so it's called rose quartz, which is basically a pink. Uh, but, yeah, so that's the Samsung uh, charm. So the Samsung charm. And Samsung, 
while Samsung attempts to charm you, Xiaomi uh, is attempting to take your money by offering you some really big real estate for oh, I am excited insanely for insanely cheap one. prices. <laughs> so earlier this week, uh, Xiaomi officially launched the Xiaomi Max, which is a 6.44 inch display. For an absurdly low price of two hundred thirty dollars, we're gonna have to find a way to get our hands on this one because uh, I, I we we actually have seen this live. So uh, we're gonna have a guest on our show in the coming weeks. We're gonna do an episode of the Simotech Talk Show exclusively talking about Chinese material, uh, which, in my opinion, China is now the epicenter of technology growth. And uh, one of our uh, one of our guests in the in our next episode. Uh, is actually in China. So Ben, uh, one of our really good friends, is actually in China right now. He was visiting a bunch of stores like the Xiaomi store, and he actually got his hands on the Xiaomi Max and the Mi 5, and he played with it, and uh, he's bringing some goodies back for us to review. Uh, But the Mi Max in person looks terrific. I I saw a picture of it, uh, of him playing with it, and uh, he's going to talk to us about it. But we are here to talk a little bit about the uh, thing. So mm-hmm. you want to give some sure. information? Sure, yeah. So uh, like you mentioned earlier, it's got the 6.44-inch display. The battery, 4,800 milliamp. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's a decent um, size battery. Yeah. It feels decent, decent size. <laughs> it also has a 16-megapixel rear camera a 5-megapixel front camera, and a fingerprint scanner in the back. Which is awesome because in 2016, every phone should have a fingerprint scanner, even the lower end. So I'm glad uh, Xiaomi is kind of pushing the boundaries there with the fingerprint scanner stuff. And as a Nexus 6P owner, I love the fact that the fingerprint scanner is in the back. It's just so convenient for me holding my phone and just using my finger to unlock it from the back is just its natural. So the Mi Max is 7.5 millimeters thin and comes with, of course, the traditional colors in 2016, like I said before, which is gold, silver, and space gray. Very Apple-esque. They're missing the uh, rose gold. The rose gold, the pink. (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised if they came out with a special edition of that later. Uh, did Did you talk about the specs already? Um, just the camera. So okay, so it comes with three gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty dang good for a two hundred something dollar device. Thirty two gigabytes of storage, and it runs a Snapdragon six hundred and fifty um, for the default, the first uh, it's like configuration, a base the base model. Yeah. And uh, you can also bump that up for a one for a uh, Snapdragon six hundred and fifty two, which is a stronger processor, and sixty four gigabytes of RAM with. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, no, the 650 processor has a second version, which is 1699 uh, uh, one, so it's about 260 dollars US, and that one goes up to 64 gigabytes. Then there also is a premium edition, so it's like a, a, I guess a pro version, so a three, premium version. Three different tiers, I guess. Right, three yeah. tiers. Then the highest tier is a four gigabyte uh, of RAM model with 128 gigabytes of storage and a Snapdragon 652 for 1999 won, which is 300 about $307. Which Crazy prices. For a Snapdragon 652, uh, if, if you run benchmarks, uh, for those of you who don't know, the Snapdragon 652 is basically the equivalent of uh, a, a little more improved version of the uh, Snapdragon 801, which was the basically the flagship processor a couple years ago. Um, obviously, that's that's just a very vague comparison. It, it's a much better processor than 801. Uh, but it, it's crazy how mid, mid-range processors have come such a long way. It's yeah. basically stronger than a flagship processor from about a year ago. Yeah, it's so, incredible. Yeah, so the Mi Max launches uh, May 17 in China. It's most likely not going to come here in the U.S. It runs uh, the new edition of Mi UI 8. Um are you excited about it? I mean, you love big phones, and you have used Xiaomi products in the past. Your I daily have. driver was a Xiaomi for a I while. I have. I'm, I'm definitely excited to see how Mi UI 8 is. Um, I forgot which which version I had on my phone previously. You used 7 for the... Uh, uh, you had the Mi uh, 4, 4C? 4C, I think. Yeah, yeah. the 4C. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I really liked it, but I did think that MIUI needed some updates and some changes to it. So I'm hoping, um, supposedly, MIUI 8 is going to have a lot of updates to it. Um, it can do things with the fingerprint security stuff. Uh, the camera app is updated. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm hoping this will help 
make it more efficient, and I'm hoping it'll help make the phone run smoothly too. Yeah, so that's the Mi Max. It's official. It's true. They're making a bigger phone than even the Mi Note. <laughs> so it's gonna be a, a phablets are. There you go. It's a mid ranger that's gigantic, basically. Yes. Um, and moving along to the final story of the week. Um, it's another Chinese company, but you might have heard of this one uh, all the same. This is ZTE, which is releasing the Axon 7 at an ex- uh, event on May 26. So if you haven't heard of, Ax- uh, of the Axon line, ZTE is a big-time Chinese company, and they had a deal with Amazon where they were releasing uh, their phones, the Z- ZTE Axon, on the Amazon uh, website for... Absurdly cheap, cheap price for yeah. what you were getting last year, and that was actually a surprising phone of the year candidate for uh, 2015. Yeah. A lot of people were really excited about that phone. A lot of people bought it on Amazon, I think, right? Yes. And uh, I so just, I just want to ask really fast. I mean, did did we miss somewhere? This is going to be called the Axon Seven. We yeah, missed that's, two to six. Yeah, that's a good one. point because there there was not <laughs> an Axon Two. Three, four, five, or <laughs> six. There was literally the Axon and Axon Pro and the Axon Mini. Mm-hmm. So uh, there was no seven. It's an interesting uh, name. I think uh, they. I think ZT is just literally trying to draw in the average consumer because everything is on seven now. The iPhone is going to be on the seventh edition in September. Samsung is on the S seven. So yeah. I guess ZTE just literally thought, hey, everybody sees a seven now anyway. If Let's we just don't catch up a, to them quickly. Yeah. If we put the two <laughs> out, people are going to be like, oh, you're so much lower. <laughs> so I guess they put the seven now. Uh, but it, this is the sequel. It basically is an Axon 2, um, which is interesting because the phone's not even a year old, and we're going to 7, <laughs> so it's pretty funny. But some specs really quick. It's a 5.5-inch Quad HD display Ooh. running a Snapdragon 820 processor with a 20-megapixel rear camera. 20. 8 megapixel front camera and 4 gigabytes of RAM with 64 gigabytes of storage. So this is... That's crazy. This is a crazy spec yeah. out. It's a fully spec out phone. Basically, everything you were want for a 2016 flagship, yep, right? Exactly. I hope it's much better looking than uh, the last model, though. Well, <laughs> see, this is where we uh, disagree because mm. Lita here really disliked the grills on the uh, original Axon. I'm not a fan. I, th- I think it was hideous. I actually really liked the phone, and I was thinking about purchasing it uh, to replace my, at the time, Moto X 2014. It's about the same size, but... Uh, she really disliked the grills on it. And the reason I didn't purchase it was because the one on Amazon, the U.S. Amazon store, did not have a fingerprint scanner. The original Axon did not have it. The Pro version was not sold on the U.S. Amazon. Right. I think it was only released in China right. and in Europe. Yep. So uh, it's cool that they finally threw in uh, a full package that might be interesting. And if they price it similar to the comp- competitive price they had it at yeah. last year. Yeah, it'll definitely a, sell. It's a no-brainer, guys. Yeah. It's no-brainer. And I have used ZTE devices in the past, and their interface is really clean. Uh, it's a mix of stock Android and a little skin. It's not that bad. It's actually pretty nice to use. And uh, for a quad HD screen, fingerprint scanner, A20, Good storage amount. Uh, well, the camera is debatable. Megapixels doesn't necessarily mean everything, but spec-wise, this looks absolutely insane. It sounds like everything you want in a 2016 phone. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, hopefully uh, on the 26th, May 26th, we'll figure out the pricing, and hopefully ZTE prices it competitively like they did last year. And this might be the actual phone to break into the U.S. market if the actual first Axon wasn't. Um, but yeah, I think... That wraps it up for us yeah. for this week, right? Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that wraps it up for the first episode. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up on we our do. channel this uh, coming week. I actually have a really cool MacBook doc that I will be releasing uh, a review on, you know, I think, on Monday or Tuesday. So stay tuned for that. And uh, Lita will be taking a look. I'm working on a few myself. Yes, she will be back on our channel very, very soon. She has a couple core cool reviews, the Razer Blade Stealth. We will be uh, releasing that in the coming weeks. Also, the Razer. Nabu X. Nabu X. Which and also, right now. we have uh, a review of a really cheap tablet that I really there. like. 
the uh, Asus ZenPad. Yep, the which Zenpad. I got for a steal of a deal. Right. So we'll be talking about those in the coming weeks, and uh, we'll be back either next week or the week after with episode number two. Uh, we'll talk about Google I/O and what they actually did announce, and whether what we talked about came to fruition or not. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys uh, learned something, enjoyed it, want to talk about it, comment on our posts. Like us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, and, and be sure subscribe. to subscribe. And sure like. to subscribe. But uh, once again, this is Lita, and I'm Alex. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll be back very soon in the next video. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.